What is up YouTube, it is Coach Corey, and today we're doing another state of the game video. Last time we went over the balance of the brawlers and how balanced we think each brawler is and what sort of changes that might need to be more balanced. Today we're going over how balanced each of the different event types are and how balanced each of the maps are and what sort of changes they all need to become better, to become more balanced, you know, what sort of problems they have, all sort of stuff like that. All right, let's get into it. So first off to start out, I just wanna go over my rating scale. So I rated everything from A to F. So if something has an A rating, it's very well balanced. It either promotes good team diversity. It has little to no problems with either the map or event type. Essentially, there's not much that need to be improved upon. If it has a B rating, it's fairly well balanced. It has some small problems, but not that many overall. Um, if it has a C rating, it's somewhat well balanced. It has a good amount of problems, but not many major problems. Um, if it has a D rating, it's definitely not well balanced and it has a decent amount of major problems. If it has an F rating, it's very poorly balanced. It has lots of things that need to be fixed or just need to be scrapped overall. So let's start out with Smash and Grab. So Smash and Grab is overall one of my favorite game types. Um, I think it promotes a lot of different team coordination and strategy, which is a great thing. Although it does make it a little harder to do well with randoms. I think that's probably what Smash and Grab needs to be improved on the most is it's sort of punishing towards randoms. Um, it's hard to have good team balance. I think if you could improve random matchmaking, like do things like allow individuals to create lobbies with people from other clans, you can maybe sort of search for other brawlers or search for other people specifically. I think that would be great. And that's probably the best thing that would improve Smash and Grab. But overall, spawn trapping isn't too bad in Smash and Grab. It is a little bit of a problem. Um, there's a lot of great brawler diversity though. You can use almost every brawler in Smash and Grab. It depends somewhat on the map. But overall, it promotes good brawler diversity. As far as my overall rating, I give Smash and Grab an A-. I think there are definitely some small things that can be improved upon, but it feels like the most polished of all the different game types. So now let's get into all the different maps for Smash and Grab. So let's start out with Deep Hollows. So Deep Hollows, I think, is overall fairly well balanced, but it doesn't promote great team diversity. Um, a thrower is basically required on this map since there's plenty of walls that not only give Thrower is a great place to hide behind, but also creates a lot of lanes and people group up often on this map. So area of effect brawlers are great on this map. I think it definitely favors them a lot. Um, as far as the spawn trap potential on uh, deep hollows, I'd give it a about a medium for those potential. It's fairly easy to hit the enemy as soon as their invincibility is up, um, as the spawn has essentially no cover. But it's also not too hard for the enemy to get close enough to the middle while they still have their invincibility to push you back enough that they can sort of gain some control and they're not just stuck in their spawn. Overall, I give Deep Hollows a B rating. For Hard Rock Mine, I think it's a well-balanced map. I think it promotes a good amount of team diversity and I think the spawn trap potential is pretty low. I think you can enemies can hide in the grass by your spawn and that can be pretty annoying, but you can sort of push them back and if you're careful, um, you're not going to be surprised by them, and you can sort of be on even footing with them. Overall, I give Hard Rock Mine an A. I think Hard Rock Mine is well done. And now for Crystal Cavern. I think Crystal Cavern is fairly well balanced. Um, it promotes good team diversity overall. Having at least one long-range brawl on this map is very key, and because of that, it ends up creating more opportunities to kill the enemy gem carriers since you can do it from a longer range and at almost any point of the match. Um, it can be hard to hold on to your gems late game, um, as a lot of the walls end up getting destroyed and there's not really many places to hide So that can be a bit of a pain and it can become more of a long-range battle towards the end of the game The spawn trapping potential on crystal cavern is probably low to medium Enemies can use your walls against you in that sense so that can be sort of annoying But generally you can still end up getting far enough out that you can push them back Overall, I give Crystal Cavern an A minus. Now for Bone Box, I think Bone Box is pretty well balanced. There's lots of grass, which allows for a good amount of sneak attack opportunities. And that sort of requires teams to have good combination and teamwork to keep their gems. That sort of punishes randoms a little bit, but it does promote good team diversity. And I think the spawn trap potential is pretty low on Bone Box. With all the grass, it's fairly easy for teams to recover and to counterattack the enemy. Overall, I give Bone Box an A. And now for Mushroom Cave. I think Mushroom Cave is a fairly well-balanced map. Um, Promotes a decent amount of team diversity here. While a thrower isn't required on this map, it is heavily recommended. Like Deep Hollows, there's a lot of different lanes and enemies tend to group up a lot. So throwers are very strong here and there's a good amount of walls for them to use for cover. 
Um, but it still promotes a decent amount of team diversity, I think. The spawn trapping potential is about medium. It's fairly easy to hit enemies as they pass through the walls and their spawn. It definitely groups them up and, it make, and you know where they're going to go, so you know where to aim. It does sometimes require to using your super to get out of the spawn, which can definitely be annoying. So the spawn trapping potential is a little bit higher on this map than some of the others, but overall it's not too bad. I give Mushroom Cave an A-. And now Temple Catacombs. I think Temple Catacombs is fairly well balanced. I think it promotes a good amount of brawler diversity on this map. Throwers are great at spawn trapping on this map, but otherwise the map doesn't really specifically suit them, so I don't think they're too strong here. I don't think it necessarily needs a thrower. The spawn trapping potential is low to medium, it sort of depends on if they have a thrower. If they have a thrower, it definitely can be hard to get out of the spawn, but it's definitely possible to push the thrower back, especially if you blow up your wall in the front. And then it's also not too hard to get to the side grasses, and then you can really sneak attack and surprise the enemy. Overall, I give Temple Catacombs an A-. And now for Bounty. I think Bounty is pretty well balanced. Overall, it promotes a decent amount of team diversity but it definitely favors long-range brawlers on most maps. I think what stops Bounty from having poor deck diversity is that they have a lot of different maps that specifically favor short to medium-range brawlers. Maps like Snake Prairie, like Outlaw Camp, those two maps are great examples where they certainly favor short to medium-range brawlers, and I think that's one of the great things about Bounty. Overall, though, long-range is definitely heavily favored in Bounty. On most of the other maps, though, having at least two plus long range brawlers is almost required as most of the walls end up getting destroyed and the maps tend to become very open. With teams not really needing to stay towards any central objective, walls end up tending to be destroyed and teams can sort of be more campy. They don't have to be as aggressive. They, that's where long range really shines is since you don't have to push forward, if any enemy team comes towards you, you're able to hit them before they get there and then also makes it harder for them to get away. This also makes it really hard to spawn trap people as as soon as you spawn in Bounty. Um, since there's so much long range, it's really easy to strike back at the enemy. They can't be too aggressive trying to spawn trap you. So I think that's one thing that's done really well in Bounty. It's very hard to spawn trap. Overall in Bounty, I think the better team tends to win most often. I think that's one of the best things about Bounty. As far as overall rating, I give it a B plus. I think there are a few things I would change that could be done better, but overall, I think it's pretty well done. Okay, now let's quickly go through the bounty maps. I think Outlaw Camp is well balanced. It promotes good team composition diversity. Almost any brawler can really be used to, and I think that's great. Overall, I give this map an A. On Snake Prairie, I think it's a fairly well balanced map. It can seem a bit random, but it is a very unique map, and I really like that. Um, it allows for fun and different gameplay. Overall, I give Snake Prairie an A-. Now Shooting Star. I think Shooting Star is fairly well balanced, but it heavily favors long-range brawlers more so than any other map, so it really has poor team composition diversity. You're really going to be mostly seeing teams that have th like two to three long-range brawlers, mostly three every once in a while too. As a result, it's sort of hard to keep your stars at the end of games. There's really not nowhere to hide. You sort of are at the mercy of the other team. You're backed into a corner most of the time at the end of games if you have the lead. I think that's something that could be improved upon with Shooting Star. Overall, I think it's pretty well done. I give it a B. Now, Star Gulch. I think Star Gulch is fairly well balanced. It, again, heavily favors long-range brawlers. Um, it's really easy to destroy the walls. So towards the middle of the game and the late of the game, most of the walls are destroyed, and it's sort of a fairly wide open map then. Um, there's better team diversity than Shooting Star, but it's still fairly poor, still mostly long range brawlers. Overall, I give Star Ghost a B plus. Now Temple Ruins. I think Temple Ruins is a somewhat well balanced map. It does promote good team diversity. I think it does that very well. But the Mortis double thrower strategy is just too annoying it shouldn't be as strong it's not that you can't beat it there are certain strategies you can do um it sort of requires teams to either snipe the middle star so it makes it hard for the mortis to survive getting the middle star or or and or have a thrower so they can't just you know hide in their spawn and you can't approach them i think one thing they need to do is change the walls by the spawn so it's easier for the enemy team to get into your spawn um for instance you could make openings on the sides, that way you can walk in from the sides and the middle, and then it's a lot harder for the enemy team to protect and stop you from coming in. I think that could be one way to stop it. Either way, they need to do something to make the Mortis Double Thrower strategy less viable. I think it's just not very fun gameplay. It's very campy, it's very boring. Um, it's not very hard to do, it's low skill based. 
Right now, I put it at a C. If they can change that strategy, I would bring it up to an A- minus or an A. Terracot Square is a fairly well-balanced map. It promotes okay team diversity. Um, it tends to favor teams with 2 plus and long range brawlers, but the decent amount of grass does allow at least one either short or medium range brawler to be used, so I think that's pretty good. I think one thing that's annoying about this map is teams do tend to spend a decent amount of time just sort of shooting down the side lanes, whether or not they even know if someone's there. They sort of just do it because it's really easy. There tends to be someone there half the time or a good amount of the time. I think that sort of um, is a little annoying, except for skill-based. Some people might like that. I'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing. I just don't think it's a great thing. Uh, personally, I don't enjoy that part of the map, but overall, I give this map a B. Okay, then Cabbage Patch. I think Cabbage Patch is fairly well balanced. It does promote poor team diversity, though. It, again, heavily favors long-range brawlers. Towards the middle of the late of the game, almost all the walls, or most of the walls, are destroyed. Early game, you can find some medium range brawlers and throwers to be useful, but they tend to not be so useful at the late game stages. Overall, I give Cabbage Patch a B. Okay, now Groundhog Burrow. I think Groundhog Burrow is fairly well balanced. Although it's only available in the 12 hour slots, you really don't get to play it that much. Um, it does promote decent team diversity. Again, you still sort of favor long range brawlers, but throwers are definitely strong here. And some mid range is usable for sure. There's a good amount of cover, so I don't think it's poorly well done. Um, while the map isn't symmetrical, it doesn't seem to like strongly favor one of the two spawn sides. I think they did that pretty well. Overall, I give Groundhog Burrow an A-. Now for Brawl Ball. Brawl Ball is a fun, fast-paced game mode that, in my opinion, provides a breath of fresh air compared to some of the other game types. But it's not the most consistent. I don't always feel like the better team wins. You can easily outplay the enemy, and it can still be very hard to score, score a goal sometimes. And some combos can be very hard to stop. For instance, the El Primo self-pass and jump technique. Or sometimes Mortis to a certain extent, although not always. And I think another thing that's frustrating with Brawl Ball is it can be too easy to own goal. I definitely think that's frustrating, especially when the ball is stopped on the goal line. You can sort of try and go behind the ball, go in your own goal, and go and take the ball up from going behind it. But I still have, the, have seen that cause goals. So that's definitely frustrating. I think one thing that Brawl Ball is great at is it promotes great team diversity and there are a lot of different brawlers you can be used. If you don't break boxes or do a lot of damage, it's hard to be used, but there's still a lot of brawlers overall that can be used in Brawl Ball. There's only three maps in Brawl Ball, but it's obviously the newest game type. It just came out last update, so I do think um, that can be excused and I'm assuming there's going to be at least one new Brawl Ball map in the coming update. One thing I have to say for the Brawl Ball maps is they each feel unique and each have a different feel to them and I really like how the gameplay flows and feels on each of the maps. Overall, I give Brawl Ball a B rating. There's still some things that need to be polished, but I think that they can definitely get it up to an A with just some minor adjustments. Okay, so Pinhole Punt. I think Pinhole Punt is fairly well balanced. It promotes good team diversity. It can be difficult to score a goal early as you have to really go through two layers of boxes just right in front of the goal to be able to score a goal. So you sort of either have to kill the whole team or you just have to wipe out those boxes early. So that can be a little frustrating and it can make it a little slower in the beginning of the game, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. It just often requires those front boxes to be broken in order for there really to be many goal scoring opportunities. One thing about Pinhole Punt is there's plenty of grass which really allows for some unique sneak attack opportunities and I do like that about this map. Overall, I give Pinhole Punt an A-. Now Backyard Bull. I think Backyard Bull is fairly well balanced. It promotes good team diversity. It is easy to open up the boxes and create lots of different shooting lanes, so I really like that. Overall, I give Backyard Bull an A. You know, Triple Dribble. Triple Dribble is a fairly well balanced map. It can be hard to score early since there's so many different boxes and so many different layers, but it does promote good team diversity. I still like the feel of the map. Overall, I give it an A-. Okay, now for Heist. I think Heist is probably the hardest of the game types to balance, as each team attacking and defending has a distinctly different objective, while as in all the other game modes, each team is trying to do the same thing. Another thing is the team composition in Heist is very poor, with really only six brawlers being head and shoulders above the rest, and that's Colt, Crow, Ricochet, Dynamite, Barley, and Brock. And there's two other brawlers that are still usable, and that's Bull and El Primo, and the rest have very poor win rates. 
and they're really not the most usable. I probably wouldn't use them in Heist. I guess the, the one exception is probably on GG Corral, where a few other of those brawlers are usable. Overall, map balance is pretty so-so, with most of the maps having at least something that can be improved upon, if not multiple things. Spawn trapping tends to be a problem on a lot of the maps, and that's especially because in Heist, the defending team can afford to be very aggressive because when they die, they spawn right next to the safe that they have to defend. So it's okay for them to be very aggressive and push very far up the map and try and spawn trap because if they can hold you off for 30 seconds to a minute and then they die, well, that's okay because they're right next to where they have to defend. Also in Heist, the team composition and team balance and strategy is very important. So it makes it even harder to play with randoms. So it's another negative. While Heist is a unique game type that can be fun, I think there's a lot that's still going to be improved upon in Heist. Overall, I give Heist a C+. Okay, now let's go over the maps for Heist, starting out with Kaboom Canyon. Kaboom Canyon is fairly well balanced. I think it promotes just okay team diversity. It's a fairly open map, so it allows for some big rush to the safe, which I think is fine. The spawn trap potential on this map is sort of medium to high. Um, a Colt or a Ricochet or even a Barley or a Dynamite can make it fairly easy to make it really difficult to advance past the two choke points on the side from your spawn without taking at least a good amount of damage. So I think that's a big negative for this map. Overall, I give this map a B. I think if you widen those choke points and make it easier to get out of your spawn, I might raise this to an A-. For Bandit Stash, I think Bandit Stash is fairly well balanced. Personally, I think Kaboom Canyon and Bandit Stash are the two most well-balanced maps for Heist. Um, I think Bandit Stash promotes just okay team diversity again. Um, while throwers are key in general in Heist, they're a special key on this map. As far as the spawn trap potential, it's about a medium. It definitely happens, but it can be overcome. Overall, I give this map an A-. I still think the better team will win the majority of the time on this map. And now Safe Zone. I think Safe Zone is somewhat well-balanced. It's fairly hard for the attacking team to advance up the map early on until they get their supers and then they can push them back um, and they blow up some of the walls that the defenders are really using to hide behind. It's really easy on this map for the defenders to hide well and stall the opponent as opposed to just killing them. It's really easy for them to stall them very well. I don't think that's great gameplay really and that's why it's really hard early on. The spawn trap potential on this map is medium to high. Those two choke points by the horizontal wall, sort of in the middle near the attacker's spawn, it creates really easy shots for the defenders. And oftentimes it's easy for the defenders to know where the opponents are going, and it makes it easy for them to land shots, and thus it's pretty easy to spawn trap on this map, honestly. Um, it's hard to advance up the map through zigzagging. You really have to advance through straight lines, and that's why it makes it so hard. Overall, I give Safe Zone a B-. Now GG Corral. GG Corral, I think, is not very well balanced. It clearly favors the attacking side. It's too easy for the attacking team to advance up the map, and it feels like the safe honestly has sort of low health. I think you need to fix at least one of those two things. Um, it does promote pretty decent team diversity, though, compared to the other maps on Heist, and I think one of the reasons for that is actually because attacking is so much easier. You can sort of use brawlers who are normally not very good at attacking, but are good on defense, like Shelly or Tara or even Piper. Additionally, the spawn trapping potential on this map is actually low since there's not very many walls and there's a high amount of grass, so it's really easy for the attackers to avoid the enemy. And actually, that's sort of why it makes it so easy for the attackers to win on this map. Overall, I give GG Corral a C+. Okay, now last but not least, Showdown. Showdown is a unique game type that while it has many strengths, it also has a few flaws. It's probably the best game type to play if you can't find a good team and you aren't very high in trophies. While some people have maxed their brawlers, aka reached 500, in Showdown, it's overall not very rewarding as you get past about 400 trophies. For most, it's not a sustainable way to gain trophies high up, and is overall a big net loss for the whole 10 in the match. Also in Showdown, while there's lots of walls which allow medium and short range brawlers to thrive, it promotes the ability of throwers even more. And of course, teaming is quite a polarizing topic among the community, but I'm not really going to go into whether that's good or bad for the game, but it does make Showdown less of a true free-for-all. Additionally, I do think some of these map layout problems in Showdown could be solved with just a nerf to throwers, so that's to be discussed later. Overall, I give Showdown a B rating. 
Okay, now for the maps I'm showdown. Starting with Death Valley. I think Death Valley is fairly well balanced. You can have some quick deaths on the cardinal points of this at the start of the game, and that can be sort of frustrating, but that can definitely be avoided if you're just a little cautious. Um, I think it does promote a good range of brawlers. I think slightly less walls and more grass in like the middle third of the map, dividing it vertically. I think that could definitely help lessen the strengths of throwers while still allowing medium close range brawlers to work really well. Overall, I give Death Valley an A-. And now Feast or Famine. Feast or Famine, I think, is well balanced. It's a very unique map, and it has different parts of the map that really promote different brawlers and different strengths of the brawlers. There's a good diversity of brawlers, and whilst throwers are still strong there, the map doesn't really specifically play to their strengths, I think, which I think is good. Overall, I give Feast or Famine an A. And Skull Creek. Skull Creek, I think, is well balanced. There's a good diversity of brawlers. There's lots of possible battles as soon as the game starts. I give Skull Creek an A. Now Stormy Plains. I think Stormy Plains is somewhat well balanced. There's a decent diversity of brawlers, but the map layout heavily favors throwers and especially teams of throwers. Overall, I give Stormy Plains a B. Okay guys, those were all my thoughts on the balance of the different event types and maps. What'd you guys think? Did you disagree with any of my opinions? What, what do you think of the different maps? Now remember, if you want to check out my other state of the game video where I talked about the balance of the brawlers, you can check out the link in the description. Real quick, I do want to apologize for glancing over to the side a ton. It was sort of hard to do this video without looking at my notes very much. Alright, but that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you later.